How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Transport Fever 2, and welcome to the Deluxe Edition, Deluxe Upgrade, whatever you want to call it, version of Transport Fever 2. Now, the developers recently announced that this game was coming to console, and they brought some of the cool features from console, such as controller support to PC, which is where I'm playing this today. And I'm also using a couple of mods here and there to improve my experience. I will link all of those in the video description if you want to read more about them. But basically, long story short, it includes expanded industries, which we've used here in the channel a couple of times before. And it also includes a mod that is going to allow towns to more naturally expand and grow. If you provide goods to their industries, the industrial zones will grow. If you provide commercial goods, the commercial zones will grow and the same to, I guess, the residential parts of the towns as well. Now we're playing on a slightly different map to what I usually use. I would usually use a temperate style map. I switched it out for tropical this time, although we're using English town names and European style vehicles because I'm boring like that. Uh, but the reason I wanted the tropical map is because it just has a bit more water around it and that's something we can play with. Either that's going to give us more boats or more planes. Either or, it works for me. Now, I want to get started right around here with Norton, Radstock, and Bingham because both of these towns want food and you might have spotted it already. There's a really, really good setup right here. Now, Bingham, we could go basic on this one and we could go to Bingham Farm. We could get some grain, we can take it through Bingham, we can take it to Bingham Food Processing Plant down here, and we could say turn two grain into one food, take it to Bingham, and boom, you're done. Sorted food for Bingham. But, and you might have spotted this already, there is a food processing plant right here that will take meat, coffee, or alcohol, and it will turn those things into two units of food. Now that's important because what you might have noticed is, and we've talked about this in previous series, but for those of you that don't know exactly, you know, how these things kind of go, we'll explain it for those of you that are new to transport fever. Uh, long story short, the ratio of grain to food, if we go from a farm to a regular processing plant, is two to one. What that means is every two units of grain that gets made in this farm will combine to make one unit of food, which will then get delivered to Bingham. So it's a two to one ratio on grain to food. What's interesting is that it is a one to two ratio on something like alcohol to food, which is very good, right? That's a very, it's a good ratio. It's a very good ratio, especially when you consider that it's two to one for alcohol. So if we take that, it is two to one back to two. So essentially every one unit of grain, even with an extra middle stop, ends up being one unit of food. So it's gonna be much more worthwhile for us to say that this farm, this farm, and these two farms all go through this alcohol distillery. And then the food, all of that alcohol goes down to here and the food from here can get split between Bingham and Norton Radstock. That's my plan, that's the goal, that's what we're gonna try and do. So let's get started. Long story short, let's just get to it. We're gonna need a few things though. We're gonna need to get ourselves some buildings and we'll start with a road depot. This is where we're gonna get all of our vehicles from. And we'll go ahead and just put it over by the industry here in Norton Radstock. We'll go ahead and rotate it around. We'll put it right about, I wanna say, I wanna say right about there is good. So something like, uh, something like that should be, why can I not, I can't place this. <laughs> I can't, I can't, why can I not place this? Oh, one of my mods is giving me trouble, isn't it? Oh wait, I can place it now, that's fine. I don't know what was up with that, but there we go. We have a road depot, that's absolutely perfect. Uh, what we can now go ahead and do is get ourselves a truck station. And I'm really, really hoping I can do a little something, something here. I'm kind of hoping I can put the truck station right in the middle, right at this corner. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the overlap on the uh, on the farms, though. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put one of the truck stations, I'm going to say, right about there. And that's going to cover this farm on the, on the right. So this guy's going to live right about there. And for this one, 
We'll go ahead, we'll just swing it around and we'll put it, I'm gonna say right about, I think right about there is pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put a truck station right there. That's where we're gonna pick up the grain from those two farms. We then want the grain to come down this way. And what I'm gonna do is three platforms this time. So one for each of the grain deliveries and then one for the alcohol going out of this place. We'll swing it around and it looks like I can put it down here a little bit, which is fantastic. We'll go ahead and put it right about there. So grain comes in, goes into alcohol. Alcohol gets picked up. It gets taken down to here and we're going to need one spot to drop the alcohol off and then two spots to, I guess, go ahead and take the food out. So we'll go for another, you know, three platform thing here. We'll swing it around and we'll put it about as far down this road as it's going to let me, which is roughly about there. That seems good. And that seems fine. So that's how that's all going to be set up. We just need to worry about deliveries now. And what we'll do is use the truck unload stop right about here. And we'll go ahead and get a truck unload stop right about here as well. And that's where we're going to be delivering the food to. So let's go ahead and set up some lines here. We've spent about $750,000 already. So what we'll do is go to new line. We'll say it goes from here to there. It's going to be a very short line, but that's okay. And it's going to be, we'll go red. I guess that's fine. And we'll abbreviate this with road cargo. So RC is road cargo. Uh, we'll just call this uh, Norton. I'm not going to put Radstock in there. We'll just say Norton to keep it nice and short. And this is going to be uh, grain to booze one. So we'll go ahead and copy that name. We'll go click new line and we'll say exactly the same thing here. We'll paste that in there. Grain to booze number two and also bright red. So we have the two grain delivery lines, which is absolutely fantastic. Although I do want to make sure you're going to platform number two. So there we go. That's going to be, you know, grain line one to platform one, grain line two to platform two, and then a new line from here on platform three, going all the way down to here. We'll say platform one. And now what we can do is we can actually have this stop on the way back delivering the food. So this one is gonna be road cargo, Norton. It's gonna be uh, booze and I guess to food to delivery is what we'll call this. So that way we know it's kind of a three-step thing. Pick up the booze, turn it into food, and deliver it to the town. And that's perfect. That's all we need to do. Although what we can do, just to make sure it's set up properly, is we can click this little cog and we can say, step number one is load up on booze. Step number two is go ahead and unload the booze and load up on food. And step number three is unload the food. There we go. So that immediately gives us a little food delivery and production line into Norton Radstock. We want to do exactly the same thing for Bingham. And I'm very tempted to say that we do bring some grain down from this farm through Bingham down to here and back. That way, the same wagons that are bringing that grain down can bring the food into Bingham itself and sort of have a bit of a double whammy on their uh, deliveries there. So we'll go back in here, get ourselves another truck station. We just need the one platform and it can live. I'm going to say right about there is good. We'll go back to lines, create a new line. It's going to be from here going all the way down to here. And that's going to be using platform number two and then going all the way back to here. We'll go ahead and color this one bright yellow. We'll say this is road cargo. It is uh, good old Bingham and it is grain. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I just, oh, I got, I, I just, I had a moment. I've, I've just had a senior moment. <laughs> I've just had a senior moment. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I'm taking grain to the wrong place. Hold on a minute. So this is just going to be uh, Bingham food delivery is what it's going to be, which means we don't need that truck stop initially. So we can delete you. And so this guy is going to be just load up on food and then just unload on food. Okay, that should be fine, but we're gonna have to play with some ratios here is, is what we're gonna need to do. We're definitely, oh, we also have a farm down here that we could play with. We actually have, we have a lot of farms that we could feed into this alcohol distillery, but for now, we're not gonna worry too much about that. What I'm gonna do, very simply, 
is I'm going to buy some vehicles. It's going to be European horse-drawn carriages. We have four lines, so I'm going to get 20 of them. $477,000. I'm going to paint them all red for the time being. One, two, three, four, and five are going to go on the booze to food to delivery line. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 are going to go on booze one. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 on booze two. These guys get painted yellow and they go off to Bingham. So we have the vehicles. We can let the game run a little bit. We actually have the vehicles heading out. We'll speed things up. And what we should see at both of these farms, and we do see it here at the very least, is some grain production. Now, what's likely to happen is that the farms are not going to produce equal amounts of grain because one farm right now is going to produce way more than we actually need. But we'll start to figure that out. I mean, looking at Nortzen, they want 35 units of food. Looking at Bingham, they want 26. So long story short, what we can do is we'll get there. That's that's kind of the, the long and short of it is is we'll get there. Uh, now, remembering ratios, we can actually look at the line statistics panel here. And this is where we can start looking at things like the rate. Now, the rate is the annual or the approximate annual throughput per station. What that means is that the Bingham food delivery line can move roughly 26 units of food per year. And that's all right. That's 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 not bad at all, but that's not necessarily enough. When it comes to the Norton booze to foods delivery line, it can move 10 booze. One can move 51 booze. Two can move 35. So keeping that in mind, I mean, if we have so the, the grain to booze lines, we have to remember that that is a two to one ratio. Every two grain is one booze. So, for example, we might want to say. Oh, how is this going to work? These ratios are going to be kind of weird. Uh, every two grain is one booze, so we can have half of the rate on the food delivery line, I guess. Although now that I think about it, this is this is the only line that's bringing the booze to the food production plant. Uh, our ratios might be a bit weird. Anyway, we'll manage is is what we'll do. We'll totally manage. Uh, I think what I'll actually do is immediately go into this line, manage the vehicles and just duplicate them. We'll bring that up to a rate of 20. So that's a little bit better. And I think that'll work out. I think we're going to end up with an excess of food somewhere. But honestly, an excess of food is fine because we can just get a couple more vehicles and figure things out that way and everything will then be OK. So I'm not super worried about that. I am a little bit concerned about the fact that this um, is that that's actually not in range of that farm. That's why it's not doing anything there. If I click on this guy, you can see this farm highlights in white. This one doesn't. That's that's kind of odd. I'm not sure how I've managed to do that, but OK. Uh, let's just do, I guess we'll just do this. We'll get another one and, uh, we'll place it right about there. And then what I can do is go to, uh, go to this line, manage the line and say, can I, can I just move you, I guess? Just add a station there. And, uh, oh no, what am I doing? Hold on. Uh, get rid of one and get rid of two. So now it goes from there and it goes down. Let's just say that you're loading up on, uh, load up on grain. And then down here, you are unloading the uh, grain. OK, so now that should work. We can bulldoze you. And we should see this guy eventually producing some grain. Again, we do have more than we need coming out of this one farm. So this guy is probably not going to produce all that much, but that's fine. We've got a little bit of a shipment. It'll pick up as time goes by. I'm not really super worried about it. And we should see, assuming you're in range, which you are, we should see eventually some deliveries coming down here like this guy with a delivery of grain. That'll start making us some money and we should start to see some booze get produced, which would be lovely. So there's a delivery. There's the booze over there. And now we just have to wait for the wagons to come by to pick that up and everything should be all right. So eventually we're going to have food production. It's just going to take some time because wagons are extremely slow. And this is a pretty big chain for early game is 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 what I'm thinking. If anything, it might have made a little bit of sense to be 
cautious about this, but it's all right. I'm also noticing we have the ability potentially to make some goods down here. So we have an oil refinery. Wait a minute. So we, we have an oil well for crude oil. We can refine it here. We can turn it into plastic down here, and then we can combine plastic with something like planks or paper or silver to make goods. Interesting. Do we have anywhere nearby that we can make we can make paper right here? Do we have a forest nearby that we can get logs from? We have one down here. It's a little bit of a distance, but it's not too bad. Do we have anywhere nearby in sort of the northern area that we could make planks? Doesn't really. Oh, no, we do. We have this over here in uh, Whitworth. We could turn some uh, some logs into planks there and bring them all the way down. I think this is probably closer down this way, though, especially if I build some some roads that way. So that's interesting. We could potentially make goods. The only issue is that I don't have any. Well, no, Hud, Huds, Hudston wants goods. Interesting. OK. Oh, that's very interesting. I like that. I'm also noticing we have a coffee farm. We have a coffee refinery. And then we could bring some coffee up this way as well if we really wanted to. This goods production being right in here, though, with all of this sort of plastic production nearby, that's really good. This is actually a really solid little production area right here around Norton uh, Radstock. I don't mind that at all. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm thinking we should do. I think we should connect these roads together and get a little bit of public transport going around here. So let's go and get myself a little street. We'll bring it down a little something, something like that. We'll go into, I guess, buildings. We'll get ourselves some bus and tram stops and we'll go here, here. We'll go here. We'll go sort of around this way and uh, I want to say down sort of this way. And we'll go in, we'll go to new line and we'll just bring it the entire way around here. And that should be absolutely perfect. We'll make it nice and red. And this is going to be road passengers. It is Norton and it's loop one is what that's going to be. We'll go ahead and buy ourselves a couple of stage coaches right about here. We'll say four of them to start with, paint them a nice bright red and put them on loop number one. And we're having issues, really? Oh, did I put it at a cargo stop? I did. I absolutely did. OK, I need to modify that line a little bit. So the drive, this one right here is a cargo stop. So now we're good. All right. So now we've got some public transport going around as well. That should keep people nice and happy. We've got some booze up here. We got some grain up here. We should end up with some food down here and eventually we'll see some deliveries as well, which is fantastic. So I'm really tempted to get some plastic production going. If I could get some logs in here, I can make some paper. I can make some goods. I can deliver those down to Hodsden, which doesn't seem like a bad idea at all. The only issue is that the logs, that is a hell of a distance. That is a hell of a distance to get up there. I'm wondering, would it be quicker to come around sort of the, the water there? Would that be a bit of a quicker route sort of through Whitehaven as opposed to from down here? It looks like that would probably be quicker. It looks like it. Whether or not it actually is, though, is another thing entirely, but it looks like it would be quicker. The only problem is that I still need to go back down to Hudson anyway, because that's the place we've been we'd be delivering them to. Or uh, pizza. What is that? P pizza Lee? Oh, my God. Peter Lee. Whatever. We can deliver them up there. Actually, that's that's yeah, a bit of a distance as well. I think Hudson will be closer. Oh, man, this is this is going to be this is going to be interesting. Although thinking about it, what I could potentially do is have wagons. So what is what is the ratio here? Two logs to one paper. Ooh. Oh, I don't love that. Oh, I don't love that at all. <laughs> What's the ratio on log? Oh, it's two logs to one uh, plank as well. We could potentially have the same wagons that would take the logs from Penzance Forest up to here, then go up and collect the goods for Hudson. So that they're running, you know, full capacity up to the paper mill, then maybe 50% capacity back to Hudson, then back down to the paper mill. That might not be a terrible idea. It's still going to take forever, though. That's still a really long journey. 
And I don't even know, are we making money anywhere yet? The food delivery line to Bingham is not. The loop is not. The grained booze line is, which is nice. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that. That might be, that might be a bit much. What about tools? So Whitehaven wants tools. Middlewich wants tools. Whitworth wants tools. Tools are typically made out of, I'm pretty sure you can make them out of planks. I don't see anyone near here. So we got steel down here by Penzance. And Penzance also has amazing plastic production uh, capabilities down here. We've got two oil wells, one chemical plant. That's, oh wait, no, we need to process it, don't we? So this actually isn't as good as I thought it was. Which means that, yeah, Norton Radstock currently, out of everywhere I've looked anyway, has the best plastic production. Which, I mean, that's, that's not bad. Uh, we do have a goods factory up here. If we could get some steel, which we absolutely can because there's a steel mill, there's an, a coal mine and an iron mine. So we could basically produce plastic down here, move it up to this goods factory, produce the steel locally, and then deliver it to Peterly. That seems like a really good idea. That seems like it would be quite profitable as well. So let's, let's give it a shot. Although I would, oh, I would like to use a different kind of steel mill. The, one of the mods that I have gives us a steel mill that will also give us some uh, slag, basically. This one right here, for example, will give us slag as an extra thing because well, the reason I would want that is something like this. I can then turn that slag into construction materials and then new mills would want that. And this is actually something we could potentially do. We have got an iron ore mine right here. I don't think we have coal. Well, we have coal down here. Coal over there as well. So we could potentially make our steel here by Whitworth and then bring it all the way over there. That's a hell of a distance. That is, a, that is a huge distance to cover. I don't know that I like that. I don't know that I want to do that. I'll tell you what. Let's keep it simple for now. Let's not get, let's not get too crazy. Let's just do a, a simple, a goods production line for Peter Lee as we can get away with for the time being. They do also want fuel. I don't see anywhere nearby that we can make fuel. So I'm not going to stress it is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm not going to stress it. It's fine. Uh, let's get some extra roads in here to start with. So we'll go for a little little country road right about there. And we will sort of bring it over like that. And that's going to be a bit of a shortcut. I could just cut it straight up, but well, maybe I should just cut it straight up. Actually, let's let's not over. Let's let's not try and get fancy this early on. We can't really afford to. So bring this guy up to here and then just go like that. I guess it's it's a bit nasty looking, but it's a nice straight shot up to there. Uh, for this guy, I'm just going to do this, and I'm also just going to do this, or maybe not. Can I bring you sort of out that way? Something like that, and something like that. So that's pretty good. That gives us a straight shot on both of the iron ore mines. Oh, we do have slag production up here. Oh, I might go for that, actually. I mean, it's, it's a little bit further away. There is coal right next to it, though, which is fine. It is a bit, there's also logs here. Ooh, oh, I'm getting carried. Wait, we, oh, we've got paper production right there. I don't need it though, do I? <laughs> I don't need it because, oh my God. I'm getting so carried away right now. <laughs> oh no, we'll keep it simple. We'll keep it simple. We'll keep it simple. I'm not getting carried away. It's fine. Um, Let's do, let's do our steel production up here. We can then bring that steel down to here and then we can do goods production down by what's its face. That seems like a good idea. So what I want to try is a truck station. And I don't think I'm going to be able to put it in the middle and have access both of these guys. Unfortunately, very close to being able to do that. But unfortunately, I, I can't. So what we'll do is we'll put a truck, a uh, truck station right about there. And that seems fine. We'll go ahead and put a truck station. That was the wrong button. Uh, truck station right about there, I think, should be uh, fine as well. So that's going to be our coal. That's going to be the iron. And then we need to deliver both of those up to here. So we'll have three platforms. 
and we'll go something like, uh, oh man, I might be overdoing this a little bit, but I'm willing to give it a shot. 250,000 for that. Then the steel needs to come down to the goods factory. So we need steel, we need plastic, and we have goods. So three platforms again. It's a little expensive, but we're giving it a shot. We're giving, we're gonna have faith here. All right, so that can all be set up. Now what we need to do is make the plastic. Now what's interesting is this is a hell of a journey that we're about to go on. Although we could use, I, I don't know how to pronounce that without it sounding almost like a, that I feel like pronouncing that just almost, it's almost like a dirty word with a lisp. Well, not a dirty word, but you know, it's it, anyway, it's, um, <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're <laughs> moving on. Um, we could actually get our oil from here. So get the crude oil, refine it and bring it down and then goods there. That seems like a good idea. It seems like that would probably be quicker, I think. I feel like that's going to be quicker. All right, we're going to give this a shot. Um, one platform. Let's go for, I guess, here for the crude oil. And then the oil needs to come in. So we want two platforms this time. So we'll go for, uh, I guess, right about there. It should be fine. So the oil comes from here, gets processed here, and then gets brought out all the way around, dropped off here, and then turned into plastic. So we need two platforms again. Oh man, I might be overdoing this, but two platforms right there. And then that gets brought down here. And then the goods get delivered to Peterly. Oh man, this is a hell of a delivery line, but I'm willing to give it a shot. So it goes to there and that's fine. All right, so. Now we get to build some new lines. New line from here to there. And that is gonna be road cargo. I don't really know what we're calling this. I guess, I mean, this is for Peterly, right? So I guess, I guess that's what we'll call it. Peterly. Uh, and this one is the iron to steel line. And that's fine. We'll go ahead and color it uh, green. That seems pretty good. So new line this time is the coal line. So it's this one. And we want to go ahead and change the iron to coal to steel. We'll make that nice and green as well. And then what we want to do is new line steel to goods, right? So this one is, that's the main production line. So steel to goods. We'll go ahead and get that to be green as well. And then we want goods from platform three down into Peterly itself. So we'll go ahead and change that to goods uh, delivery. All right. So that's the steel side of things done. Now we just need the plastic side of things. And this one's going to have to be named slightly differently because it is it's only fair. It's not really going near Peterly at the slightest. So this is going to be road cargo and oh god clithero you, you see what i mean <laughs> you see see what i mean about the name of this um crude oil to oil is what we'll call it and we'll have it be blue and then another new line it's gonna be oil to uh plastic oh my god this is this is something it's a big old line uh so oil to uh plastic and then make that blue as well. And then I guess this one can just be, this is just gonna be Peterly again, right? So this is gonna be from here to there, going to platform two, make it uh, green. And we'll copy this name and say that this is gonna be, what is it, plastic to goods? So plastic to goods, and there we go. So that should now be all of the lines set up. We just need the vehicles for it. And uh, that's going to be its own little struggle. So what I think I'm going to do is get myself another road depot. I think it's only fair that we go and put a road depot over here in that good old Clithero since I made fun of its name. And uh, we'll put it, I guess, right about there. Seems fine. All right. So, oh my God. I don't know if I'm going to have enough money to do this. I'm try I don't want to take more loans. So let's buy four vehicles, paint them blue. 
put two of them on the crude oil line, put the other two in the oil line. So now we have crude oil production that's going. And then I think what we'll do is put them up here by Liscard. I'm not even going to pretend to know how to pronounce that. How much is this guy? Oh, it's relatively cheap, actually. Let's go ahead and put them. I'm going to say right about there. Seems good. And this is going to be for the uh, the iron, the coal and the steel itself. So we'll go and buy six vehicles, paint them green. And we want the coal delivery. Ah, it was all six of them. That was not what I wanted to do. Uh, so two of you need to go on the iron to steel line. Two of you need to go on the steel to goods line. All right. So iron's getting made, coal's getting made, which means steel will get made. Steel will then get moved down to the goods line. And I think that means the goods line. Wait, no, the plastic line and the goods line needs uh, vehicles as well. Okay, that's fine. So we need to get ourselves another four vehicles. So we'll go for four. We'll go ahead and paint them green. Two of them go on the plastic, plastic goods line and then the goods delivery line. And now all of those lines have vehicles. So we should in time see this actually make money. And then looking at my other lines, I mean, wait, is the Bing the Bingham line has a rate of 32. It's still losing money, though. That's interesting to me. Why is the Bingham line still losing money? It does have it does have food production, so I'm not really too sure why. It's probably fine. It's it's not the end of the world if that line loses a little bit of money right now. It'll it'll pick up, I'm sure. Uh, what I would like to do, though is pause for a second, get rid of this corner, and I want to do this right here. And I want to do this sort of right here. Because what I'm thinking I can do is spend a little bit of money here just to make this a little bit easier for these guys to, uh, to get up this way so they can sort of bypass, you know, the town itself. We can also kind of do this. And I think that's going to make things a bit quicker, too. So there we go. That'll speed things up for that particular delivery. Uh, these guys, honestly, I'm going to try and be cheeky here as well, is, is what I'm going to try and do. So we'll have them sort of go sort of towards this little canyon that we've got. And we'll see if this is actually possible. I'm not too sure if this is going to be any faster because they do have to go uphill to get through here. And uh, that might be a bit of a problem. That's actually something I forgot to mention. This map has more hills than I usually play with as well. So, you know, vehicles have to be kind of aware of that when they're getting around here. And I have to be aware of that when I'm you know, building new roads. But I I reckon this will be fine. This is uh, this is this is probably all right. Now they're looking at it. Probably going to cut a whole lot of terrain out by doing this. Yeah, 40,000. That's a lot. Uh, is that shorter, though? It is. All right, so that's the the list guard or the list list yeah list guard bypass is what we'll call that. That seems pretty good. That there's the cliff throw bypass. You probably fellas, you don't want to. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> uh, you know, sometimes sometimes the jokes write themselves. All right, <laughs> sometimes the jokes write themselves. Just. Just, you can figure it out, all right? You can figure out what I was going to say. <laughs> you can figure it out yourself. That joke is... That's... <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, moving swiftly on. Bypassing that joke completely. Um, we could probably put a little road in here to uh, make things a little bit easier for traffic sort of going that way. So maybe... Oh, I don't know. I need it to be something like that. And then we'll just sort of come down like this. And we'll go something like this. So there we go. You can kind of avoid that road if you want to, which, yeah, we have some vehicles using it, which is fantastic. So in theory, with a little bit of time, we should see all of that making money. We have some profits coming together, which is great. The Bingham food delivery line actually has some money now, which is good. 
the loop is making a little bit of money which is good it has a rate of 28 it's got some uh it's it's got some people waiting which is fair enough so that's not too bad at all and Nordson radstock i mean it could use more food that it's getting that's for sure i mean looking at the Nordson food delivery line it has a rate of 24. so i feel like we could probably i feel like we could get more vehicles on that i feel like that would be a good idea the line is making money so I want to say manage vehicles and duplicate. That's a lot of money, but I feel like it's going to be worth it. So we'll see what happens. That should give us a frequency of 48, which is fantastic. I'm pretty sure we're doing all right. As long as the the rates on the delivery lines is OK, we should be all right there. And then I reckon we're probably going to need to invest in. We're going to want more vehicles, basically, for all of this. We absolutely are, because it is a two to one ratio on the steel as well. So let's 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 pin this for a second. Let me manage these vehicles. Let me get two more and the iron line. Let me manage those vehicles. Wait. Oh, there we go. Iron line manage. Give me two more of those as well. We really don't have much money left, but we should see a bit more production here, which is good. These guys are actually producing oil, which is amazing news. So some money is being made down this way as well. So long story short, despite the fact that it has minus 524,000 down here, I'm pretty sure we're actually earning money, which is cool. I don't usually earn money very quickly in this game. So if I can manage to earn a little bit of money without going into tremendous amounts of debt or having to take another five million in loans that would be preferable that would be that would be kind of excellent i'm just saying it's not guaranteed but it could happen and it would be nice i'm also thinking since this is the first episode i want your feedback on this um we can go and slow down the rate of time now in the last series i'm pretty sure i did a quarter speed I'm thinking half speed this time around so that time progresses quicker than it did last time, but not super quickly so that we don't miss certain eras of the game completely. Let me know what you think. Normal speed, half speed, quarter speed. Leave your feedback in the, uh, leave your speed back <laughs> in the, uh, in, in the comments below. You, you know how this works. It's YouTube. All right. Just <laughs> let me know. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right. And I think on that note, we can probably go ahead and leave it there for today. I'm excited to be back in Transport Fever 2. I'm also excited to not be coming in here with a grand old idea, because honestly, that's what killed my interest in the last series. The whole route everything through Philadelphia thing, it was a cool concept, but I would have had to tear everything apart, and I had the money to do it. I just didn't want to. All right, so I'm coming in here. I'm excited to see what we can do. I'm kind of glad that we got this little spread already, so we can kind of build up you know, good old Clithero and figure out how it's going to get some food eventually. Uh, we have some stone up here that we could turn into construction materials, maybe bring that down to Norton Radstock. They would probably appreciate that. So that's stuff we can do in the next episode and beyond. So on that note, thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Well, bye.